This video is sponsored by Brilliant.org. Check the link in the description for a discount on your first subscription. Hey guys, I'm Nate. Welcome back to the workshop. Today we're going to be building a desktop version of a siege weapon called a trebuchet. The supplies for this are pretty basic. I have here a one half inch thick piece of plywood, which is about two feet by two feet. And this will actually be extra. We'll have some left over after our build. We've got some very strong string. This will be used in the sling portion of our trebuchet. I've got a thin metal rod, which we're going to use as the axle. If you don't have any metal rod available, you can make this work just fine with a piece of wooden dowel. I'm using some scraps of leather for the pouch on our sling. If you don't have leather, any strong cloth will work just as well. I have an eye bolt, a couple of nuts, and a stack of washers that will become the counterweight in our trebuchet. We have an assortment of nuts and washers that will be used to help space our throwing arm in between our two support posts. Then we also have some of these fruit candies and these are going to be our projectiles. We'll also use a tiny eye hook and a small brad nail to attach our sling to our launch arm. The design for this trebuchet is actually very basic and easy to make. From this board, we're going to cut four pieces. There will be a base, a launch arm, and two side support pieces. To be cutting out the pieces, I do have a jigsaw and a circular saw. If you don't have those, most any kind of saw will work, but it might take a little longer. Let's start by measuring and cutting the piece of board that we'll use as the base for our trebuchet. Now, for reasons that will become clear later, let's make our board just over three and a quarter inches wide. I promise I have a good reason for it being this width, but it's a bit of a surprise. With the base cut, the next step is to cut a one inch strip at least 16 inches long. My board is about two feet long, so I'll cut my one inch strip 24 inches long and then trim it down to 16 inches. With our base and our launch arm cut out, we now need to cut out the two side supports. These are going to be two triangle shaped pieces that are tall enough that at 10 and a half inches, we can add the axle. It's not terribly important that you match any particular shape with these supports, but it is good if it extends to the left and right of the axle a little bit to add support. Now all of this will get removed and I'll have two sort of A shaped support pieces. Now with all four of our pieces cut to the right size, shape, and sanded, let's drill holes in the two supports and the swing arm. On the swing arm, we want the hole to go right through the center of the board about four inches from one end. With our two support pieces and our swing arm attached together with our axle, we now want to permanently attach our support pieces to our base. To make sure we don't crack our baseboard, let's pre-drill our holes before we add the screws. The basic construction shape of our trebuchet is now assembled. Let's trim off the axle so it's not sticking out a good six inches out of the way. Our throwing arm is now attached in between the support posts, but you can see that it will easily slide from side to side. This is where we'll use those nuts and washers to help keep it centered right in the middle. We've got some nuts and washers on our axle. It still spins beautifully, but now it has no play to either side. As a next step, let's attach a hook to the back of our throwing arm that we can use to hang our weight from. Now I've driven that I hook almost all the way down. The loop is now touching the wood. To be sure we have a way to attach our weight, now let's use a small pair of pliers and pry our eye hook open a little bit so it's more of a hook and less of an eye. To make sure it's open far enough, let's see if our large eye bolt can fit down into the gap. Looks like it fits just great. Now to make our weight, let's take our eye bolt, load it up with washers, and add a few nuts on the bottom to hold them all in place. We now have a nice weight. Try hanging that on the end of our trebuchet and see what happens if we let go. Well, partly that's what we wanted to happen. 
I guess we need to close the hook over our loop once it's attached. Before I close that on though, I'm looking at the speed of this and I think it would be better if we could get it to launch just a little bit faster than that. That's not a ton of speed on there. So I think I want to increase this weight by a little bit. These are very small, thin nails that are designed to go in an electric nail gun, but I'm just gonna use them as a little bit of weight today. So I'm just gonna take several of them, put them together and tape them onto our weight that we've already made. All right, that is considerably heavier, almost double the weight that I had before. Let's see if our launch speed seems to have changed at all. Ooh, that's a much better swing around. I like that way more. All right, let's attach our weight and then close off our eye hook so that it can't fall off on the back. And boom, beautiful. It launches and it doesn't fall off the two things we were looking for. Now we need to add the sling that will connect to the other end of the swing arm. Let's use our string and the material we're using for our pouch to make the sling before we attach it to the swing arm. When you're choosing a string for your trebuchet, you want to find one that you can't easily break by pulling on it. Now for our trebuchet to launch the way it should, one inside of the string should be permanently attached to the swing arm and the other one should come off as it's swinging through the air. So let's drill a small hole in the top of our swing arm and tie one end of our string to that and then we'll make a small ring and a little peg coming out of the top to make sure that the other string can release when it's supposed to. Positioning our sling, we want the pouch to be at the very end of our track and then we'll lower the swing arm down and that's where we know we need to attach it. Let's just make a mark in our string for how long we want it to be while it's tied around the hole. To make our hold and release mechanism, let's add a small peg at the top of the swing arm made from a very small nail and a little ring on the end of the other string. Now this nail does not have much of a head, but we want a smooth peg with no head at all. So let's get a file and take the head off of this so it's all smooth. The head of our nail has now been completely removed. It's really just more of a smooth metal stick. We now need to drive this small brad nail down into the wood until there's only about half an inch, maybe a centimeter of it sticking out. That looks like it should work pretty well. Now let's use a small washer as the ring to attach to the other side of the string. This will slip over the peg and should release nicely when our sling is at the top of its arc. We can now see how our trebuchet loads and will launch. As the weight pulls it down, the pouch will swing up and around. The washer then will slide off of the post and it should take our projectile and launch it through the air. At this point, I think we need to do a test run. I have this small piece of candy, which I've sort of smushed into a little bit more of a ball shape. This will be our projectile. We'll load that into the pouch, bring it all the way down. And when I release the pouch, this should fire. One note about this before I fire it, currently the nail at the top of the swing arm is pointed basically straight up. The angle of that nail has a lot to do with at what point the washer will slide off of it. So it's entirely possible that right now with the angle it's at, it might shoot too straight up or even launch early. Let's find out. All right, first test fire in three, two, one. Wow! Well, it didn't shoot straight up. It shot at just about a 45 degree angle, which is kind of what we want. So it's working pretty well. We just need a better launch space. I guess let's take this outside and see how far it goes. Now we let this go in three, two, one. Whee! Oh, wow. <laughs> That worked pretty great. 23, 23 feet, not bad. Let's see if we can do it again. Firing in three, two, one. Woo! Launched. And then a half, 19 and a half. Last time 23, this time 19 and a half. So it's not perfectly consistent, but that's still pretty good. I wonder if anyone firing a full-size trebuchet back in the dark ages ever said, whee, as they launched it. They were missing out on a great opportunity if they didn't. Whee! 
Working pretty good. Our trebuchet is launching these candies a good distance. I think we've shown that the counterweight on the trebuchet is working pretty well, but I also want to try taking this up to another level. I want it to really launch these things far, and I have a thought for that. All right, that was pretty cool. This thing has some pretty good distance on it, but there's a little modification I want to make. I want to add some real power onto this, and I guess I could just keep adding more weight. I think there is a limit. I think it's around 100 30 times the weight of the projectile is how much weight you should have on the back for ideal launching. But I want to see what happens if we add spring power to it. Not just a weight, but something really pulling on the string as hard as it can. To add a little bit more power to our trebuchet, we're going to try using a spring-loaded rat trap. This thing will pull on our trebuchet arm with a ton of power. Hopefully it doesn't break it, but we should be able to get some incredible distance and maybe some larger projectiles using this. Now to make sure the rat trap is pulling the string the right direction when it fires our trebuchet, let's add a small eye hook down at the bottom. That will help direct the string so it's pulling in the same direction as gravity instead of pulling sort of sideways. Okay, I've got the eye bolt installed and I offset it a little bit so it's not quite in the middle of the path. This I'm hoping will allow the firing mechanism to still pass through the whole trebuchet without getting caught on the eye bolt as it swings. We can see now that with the eye bolt in place, no matter what angle I pull this string at, it's always pulling down on the back of the trebuchet arm the same way. I can pull it straight up and it still pulls straight down. If I pull it out the direction that the rat trap will be, we have a great angle. It's pulling the same direction as gravity, so I'm hoping this will work pretty well. All right, here we go. Let's take this tape off, load it properly, and see if it'll fire. All right, now our trebuchet is not loaded at the moment because I think if we fire it indoors, we'll just end up breaking stuff, but we'll see if we can get it to fire even though there's no projectile in it. Now to set it off, I have some popsicle sticks wrapped in some paper towel, wrapped in some tape. And I'm doing this because I don't want it to hit my fingers. But this is fairly soft and should be able to activate the trap. Let's see how well this works. Hmm, I snapped the string. It might be a little too powerful and needs some reinforcement. We've got some much thicker, stronger string. I'm going to try tying that in the same way, attaching it to both the trap and the hook on the back. And hopefully this will be up to the challenge. Our stronger string is now attached to the trap and the hook on the back. Let's try launching it again and see if we can get it to not break apart this time. There's still no projectile in it, but it should work as a test. Here goes. Wow! <laughs> yeah, yeah, that launched uh, very quickly, very powerfully. I'd say that'll do it. And we're back outside. Our rat trap is attached to the trebuchet. The string is attached to the swinging arm and the trap is set. So now let's load up some ammo and hit the trigger and see what kind of distance we can get on this bad boy. All right, here goes. Three, two, one. Where'd it go? Did you see where it went? I didn't even see. Well, I guess we'll just uh, have to try again. Three, two, one. I, I didn't keep a better eye on it. We had two shots where we launched them out of the trebuchet, but we couldn't really see where they went. They launched off so quickly that we lost track of them, and even looking at the high-speed footage of the camera, we couldn't really see where they were going because they left the frame pretty fast. So I actually had my cameraman stand behind the trebuchet just to watch and pay attention to where the shot was going because we couldn't find it. And we finally managed to track where one launched after we launched it, and I was amazed at where it ended up. How far back is that thing? There it is. Here we go. This is where it landed. So the trebuchet, way over there. And so it's possible that our first couple shots went about this far as well, and they just have blended into the grass so far. Uh, but I'm amazed. I'm amazed at how far that went. Like, I thought we'd get maybe two or three times as far, and 
Well, maybe that is two or three times as far. It just seems like a lot. If our first shot was 20 feet, then this is, uh, now I have to measure. It's gonna take a while, because it's a long ways, but see how close. One, two, almost 73 feet. That's pretty great. Three, two, one. Whoo! This thing is working great. With the counterweight on it, we get shots 20 to 25 feet away. With the rack trap on it, we are getting shots up to 80 feet away. That's pretty nuts. This is certainly the kind of project that deserves to be scaled up to something bigger and possibly with projectiles that are on fire. If you wish that learning science were as exciting as watching us demonstrate all of these applications, then you should check out this quiz about various BMX tricks. This is from Brilliant, which helps you get further into the world of math and science, and not just by watching stuff, but by doing stuff. They guide you through these concepts step by step with straightforward explanations and excellent graphics that makes it very easy to digest. By going to brilliant.org slash kingofrandom, you can get started for free. And by being one of the first 567 people to upgrade to the premium subscription, you'll get 20% off. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you're not a subscriber yet, just hit the bomb to get in the club. If you missed our last video or want to watch it again, just click up here at the top. Click down there if you want to see what the internet thinks that you should watch next. That's it for now. Have fun, be safe, and see you tomorrow.